welcome to Oaken Bros. This is Eric. And I am Michael. Today we have on Kim Russo, aka The Happy Medium. Uh, Kim has an amazing career in helping people connect to the other side, understand themselves. She is an author. She has been on TV. She helps other mediums uh, become better mediums. She's helping our mother become a better medium. That's how um, we were introduced to her is through our mom, yes. who is taking medium lessons with Kim Russo. So, Well, thank you for, thank you for coming on, Kim. Well, I'm really, really excited to meet both of you. Um, knowing your mom first, I can. She raised two amazing young men. Just Thank because you. I read energy, I can see that. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Um, so, uh, ha, like, what was the first time? Like, did you see a dead person in your room? Like, did you see a ghost? Like, were you? Did you have, always have this gift? Yeah, my my mediumship sort of happened in a couple of different phases in my life. Um, not understanding until I was older and being able to reflect back to my childhood, I had to actually put it all together to make it really make sense. But when I was a child going through, going to sleep every single night, having a group of what I now know of spirits standing at the foot of my bed, the same group, night after night and I always assumed I, I shared a bedroom with my sister and I assumed the part of the bed closest to the door going back into that space I can now understand I was always looking for an exit and uh, as soon as the lights would go out in my bedroom the street light would shine in I lived in um, Queens New York with like more of city-like type of living. And my wife is from. My wife is from Queens, by the way. Queens, right? So there would always be this street light shining in my bedroom, which so my bedroom was never really completely dark, right. and the light would really shine onto these spirits and illuminate them. And as a child, I want to say I was as young as uh, five. Wow. To. And then when I moved out of there, when I was nine, they, they followed me. Oh my God. But the ironic part about this is my sister, who, whom I shared a bedroom with, never saw them. And I would try to keep her awake for as long as I can at night with excuses, asking her to teach me the alphabet, just coming up with silly reasons for her not to fall asleep. Right. And she would always fall asleep. And then there was this revelation that one night we were visiting um, my my aunt in Long Island, which I thought was in God's country, really, but it was a 40-minute ride. And coming home late one evening, I wouldn't go into my room because I knew what would be waiting for me. And I, my dad, it was a usual routine. Every night he would come in the room, check under the bed, open up the closet just to appease me. Dad, there's someone there. So, you know, you, a little girl trusts her father to, to, to for safety and protection. So that night, my father must have gotten distracted, and I was waiting for him to come in the room to make sure everything was good, and he never came, and I couldn't sleep. So I was calling for my dad, and he said, I'm already in bed. Please go to sleep. And... Then I was shocked because my sister piped in and said, Dad, you have to come and check. So I looked at her and I said, but you told me you don't see them. And she said, no, but I feel them. Wow. Oh, my God. Give so I felt call. so validated in that moment. But then life just continued. I, I, you know, kept it to myself, never really discussed it with my friends at school. I felt them following me to school. We, we walked to school in Queens. And this was just like my little secret. And I thought maybe I was crazy. But my father never really made me feel like I was crazy and neither did my mother. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward into my teens, it went away. Really? I had a normal teenage life. Mm -hmm. Dating, hanging out with my friends, no ghosts at the foot of my bed. But again, looking back, I did sleep in the bed in an unusual position, and I only recently realized why. I would always sleep with my head 
facing the door. Okay. Feeling more safe. I can't explain it. And recently I did that and it brought me back to my childhood. Mm -hmm. And I heard in my head, you always wanted to see what was coming at you. Sure. So it was did like you, a subconscious thing. Right. Did you ever, did you ever figure out who those spirits were? I think so. Uh, although not really having a name for them. Um, when I was looking through my dad's family photo albums and dad's from Europe, from, from, from Italy, actually, I was actually seeing similar people dressed similarly. And the only thing I could think of was one of two things. They were, they were either immigrants that were connected to my dad and my dad actually had a very big hand in building that house on a vacant piece of land wow. or they were connected to the land. But I, I think either way they were immigrants that um, came from the depression era. Mm -hmm. Although they never spoke, they, they were dressed a certain way with the, the black dresses, the, the women had black dress, black hats. And the, the men looked gaunt and too, too thin, Interesting. almost like they were hungry and very depressed looking, just stared right through my body. So you don't know why they were there? Um, I think it was because they knew I could see them. Do you still see them now today? The same group? No. No, no. Just in general, when you, when, when spirit comes to you, do you see them with your, uh, with, with, so with, now or? today there has been so many new ways that spirit communicates with me because I have developed a lot of parts of my, um, as they call them, Claire's, uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience. So every Claire is developed with me. I would say my most developed Claire is my clairvoyance, which is clear seeing. And I think it's because that's how it actually started with me. When spirit shows up, it's as if I'm watching a movie in my mind's eye. Right. Interesting. So that's actually how I see them. But I can as well see them as a silhouette. Uh, they, they are energy. That's what they're made up of. So I can actually see outlines of energy around people, uh, aside from their, their aura, their, their energy field. I can see when there's a, a loved one with them. But it's not up to me. It's usually up to the spirit. Sure. To show themselves. You said so. You said in your teenage years, it disappeared. You had a normal teenage years. Did it come back to you in college? When in your twenties? When when did you feel like it, the gift came back? And did and you, did you know like when did you figure out you wanted to be a medium for your work? I didn't want to be one ever. As a matter of fact, I was raised very Christian, and the Christian church teaches that this is um, the devil's work, right. and witchcraft, and I was raised very, very Christian. So I really never wanted this. I didn't know, like, why are they bothering me? I'm not bothering them. Right. And so when I got married and I moved actually back to that same apartment. Oh, wow when I was a child because my father had still owned the home mm -hmm. and we wanted to save some money and dad was helping us out. So we moved back into that very apartment and I really didn't have any res you know, reservations about moving back there. And my first son was colic. So I was up many a night holding him, rocking him, not in the same bedroom but in the same apartment and I never saw anything or I never felt anything. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, moving out of that apartment, buying our own home and having my last child, that's when the fireworks started all over again. Really? Tell but us. They actually came back with a voice. They didn't come back just showing themselves. They came back with a voice. They wanted to be heard, and they um, if I didn't know any better, I, I thought I was losing my mind. But again, I'm a very analytical person. So in hindsight, I can look back and now I understand what they were really telling me was, we needed you to have a normal life. 
without interrupting you. We knew that your first sole mission was to have a family with children. It's amazing. We couldn't interrupt you. Wow. It's amazing. But now you have your children, you have your husband. You now, have you got a, now you got a job to do. <laughs> now you're going to com be commissioned for what you agreed to do. I believe that. I believe that okay. now. But I would have never understood that. And I do believe if they had really come into my space and wanted me to be their voice before all of that other stuff, it would have taken me off course because this this work takes on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And you really can't you don't have too much control. So you know, I can do one reading and and it would wind up to be such a healing reading. That word spreads so quickly, and of course, that's human nature. That I would have, you know, twenty people calling me the next day from that one person, right, right, wanting to have the same experience. Now, as any type of compassionate human being, you would never want to hold back a healing if you had the wherewithal to, to to really give it to someone, like a doctor. If a doctor had the wherewithal and he's on an airplane, and he's it. He's going to take that oath and that dedication to the way I have this dedication to the spirit world. It's an oath and it's, it's really a, a privilege. So I do know, I believe they know that and they know that they couldn't really show themselves to me the way they would have liked to, but they gave me a taste when I was young, innocent and wide open. Right. You know, I feel like that's what's happening to our mother now where it's snowballing. And I feel like it just, she always was intuitive, intuitive, but she never practiced. And then all of a sudden when our father died, it just kind of turned on and he's giving us tips and tricks from the other side. He's in the Akashic records and he's telling us all of these amazing things to enhance our lives through other mediums, through my mom, through George Anderson, Thomas, John, you know, through those, you know, through people. And, you know, I would love to get a reading from you one day and, you know, the things that he's telling us and are it's, it's snowballing. And I feel like it would only come to the person at the correct time, just like, it happened to you. Mediumship finds you. I don't think you find mediumship. Well, amen to that because that was my story. I I fought it for, for many years, um, searching religion, searching the Bible, searching my soul. Right. Um, and there was a man who actually changed my whole life by a very few words that he said to me. Who was that? Uh, well, he's passed away now. His name was Frank Brignoli. And he played a pivotal role on my journey. And it wound up that the spirit world had to bring me a figure that was the very figure I was questioning, which he was an ex-priest. Mm -hmm. And so it was it was the it was the Catholic religion and that was really teaching that this is abomination to God and all of it. So I, I had heard about him through a friend that he's a, a an ex-priest turned psychic. And I said, oh, he'll have the answers I need. I know he'll know how to put a spin on this that can actually help me. So, I'm, so my friend made the appointment and we both showed up under her name. We went to his home on Long Island, very humble man. He read out of his kitchen. And now at the time I was already giving readings but I was more or less practicing and I really didn't know much, but I still was searching because if I had heard anything that this was against God, I was ready to hand in my, my hat. I, I, I would have hung it all up in a moment's notice. So I walk in and my friend decided I should go first for the reading. I was much, much younger. I was, think I was in my twenties, my late twenties. And I went into his kitchen. He he put a, a he was working with a, a plain deck of ta of, of uh, playing cards. Uh, so he had the you know the four diamonds. I I just remember him putting out a spread. And one of the first things he said to me was, "You, my dear, have a gift from God." So now with a poker face, I was really trying to call his bluff. 
And I said, well, gee, thank you very much. I said, but I consider myself having many gifts. I said, could you kind of narrow that down? He's, I said, you know, I, I, I know how to sew. I'm, I'm a good homemaker. I'm a good people person. He said, oh, nothing like that. He said, you have the gift. Now, this is where I fell off my chair. Yeah. You have the gift of raising your vibration into the heavenly realm and creating conversation with those people who have gone on and have passed away. And they lower their vibration and they meet you in the middle and you bring back healing messages from above. So I said, I put those cards away. I don't need, I don't need to know anything besides what you just said. I said, first of all, I want to know how you know that. Right. And he said to me, I have a gift of knowledge. So that was the first thing, the first time I ever heard that term. I said, okay, first of all, ha you need to tell me, is this, is this against God? Right. I said, this is really why I'm here. Right. He said, oh, I know that, my dear, I know. And I, my friend never said a word. I, I trust that she never said a word. Right. He said, let me ask you this one question. He said, and I want you to search your heart. Do you give readings to people with ill intention? Or is it your intention to help people and to heal people? He said, and has anyone ever walked away from a reading with you feeling depressed, down, low? Mm -hmm. Or do they walk away feeling uplifted, happy, mm -hmm. relieved, and in peace? I said, well, actually, the latter would be accurate. And those are the descriptive words they tell me. Mm -hmm. He said, that's all you need to know that you are doing God's work. That's unbelievable. He's, that's it. That's Those unbelievable. Simple, simple, simple explanation. He said, that's all you need to know. Do it's you great... get, do you get bad? Do, do you ever get bad things from the other side? I mean, we've been to George Anderson before and he's like, eh, you know, your dad's not doing well. This is years ago, obviously, you know, he kind of like, he sees that. Do you see that as well? I want to say it's this, it's, it's really no different than meeting with all different types of people on earth. Right. So when you're going through something and I, maybe I meet you at that time in your life and it's not really a positive experience, I'm not really going to judge you by what you're going through in that moment. Mm. You know, if I know you and you, you, you're that perpetual victim, then I'll say, all right, this became this person's personality. But when I encounter a spirit that is maybe going through their own transition and they come through and they say to me, you know, I really had it all wrong while I was there and I have a lot of regrets. I honor that. I don't judge them by that. But I'm saying like, can a spirit come through and go, this lady is going to have cancer in the next five years? Like, do you convey that type of message? Oh, okay. someone? I see. Do I convey like uh, if a spirit's going to come through and this woman is be like, you're going to be gone in a car wreck in the next two years or COVID's going to hit you. Like, ha have you come across that where, where spirit has come and say this person's time on earth is, is not, you know, it's the time is ticking. That's a great question. And one of the reasons I did not want this gift right. was, and I was blessed to learn this from doing all my research. I found that a lot of psychics and a lot of mediums stopped actually doing the healing work because of this devastating news that they would be able to see for not only strangers, but if you open that door, you are opening it up for your own loved ones. So then I would have the ability to see these horrible things for my own family. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a, a responsibility or a burden that I never wanted to have. So I made an agreement with the other side before I would even go forward on this path. And the agreement was, it is off the table to show me any type of upcoming death. Oh, because, wow. Because that is something that nobody can control. And that is something that I believe if you know something like that, you can actually manifest it to happen. I agree 100%. Right? Yes. So what, what my agreement was, and it still is to this very day, is I will not be on the receiving end of any information that cannot help or to heal for the highest good of all concerned. If there is information that a person has no control of, 
do not give it to me. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. So I have had situations where I've seen people about to cross, but in those cases, many times the, their loved ones are already in hospice. They're already expecting this. And, and in a lot of cases, they're praying for the transition so the loved one doesn't suffer. So I've had those types of things happen. Mm -hmm. But I am a medical intuitive and I have yeah. no medical training. So what I've learned from the other side was when I am shown a medical condition for a person, it's not for me to give them my assessment from one oh, to right. 10, what I believe is going to happen. Because what I will always say is God's outcome and God's plan and any miracle will supersede any vision of any psychic or medium. Mm -hmm. So miracles supersede our visions. Amazing. Amazing. And I really believe it's up to the own person to heal themselves or to receive the healing. But it is my job to point out if I see something that can get, you can get ahead of the curve and get a handle on it. And then of course, I've had many people who have had miracles based on the information being given to them ahead of time. I had a question. And this yeah. is a this is a loaded question, in my opinion. It it may not be, but in my opinion, it could be. What happens when you die? Like, is is it a process? Does everybody go through the same process? I remember seeing some YouTube video where it was actually on Inspire Nation. You you were on Michael Sandler's show. Yeah. And um, some you're on, you're on Michael Sandler's show. Yes. Why is that like a big thing? We oh, I was on I was on Michael Sandler's show. Ah, oh, he's right. he's really cool. I yeah. was the first. I was the first. Um, I was the first podcast for him. Oh, was, wow. yeah. yeah, he's fun. He's a, he's so high energy, right? Lo love yeah. Michael. So, love so uh, I forgot who the lady was, um, but she was explaining that there is a process for when everybody dies where the spirits come and they kind of take you out of your own head and stuff like that. Is there a process as everybody go the process of dying? What happens? Well, that's sort of like asking, does everybody come into the world the same? And that's true. We pretty much either we, you know, come out like a C-section or, you know, the other way. And I believe we all go out in a, in a natural type of a state in a similar way where uh, many people do believe that when we leave our body and they, we see the tunnel of lights, that we're actually moving out of our own chakra system, wow. which is uh, your energetic body. Mm -hmm. And I think that to me made the most sense in in a, a, of an explanation that I've ever heard. But in speaking to thousands of spirits over the years, they they do come through where um, in a very similar way. But everyone does not have the same experience based on my communication. So many people, if they were very, very sick, they choose to go into a resting phase, uh, not a resting phase of the physical body, but of the soul. The soul. Oh, my God. My, I'm sorry. My father said that at one of the readings. Right when we crossed over, we went to George, George Anderson. And my dad's like, George said, your father took a little bit of a rest as soon as he got, as he got over there. And I'm like, I've never heard that before. Yeah, what does it, that mean? What, what does, does that, that mean? mean? How do you take a well, rest? Well, what it means is think about if someone went through a very long illness and especially if they tried to hang on for their loved ones because many times they try to hang on for the loved ones. Right. And it's this constant battle and struggle that really does wear on the soul as well. You know, your emotional body. Your, it's not just your physical body. So it's like running a marathon. You you do want to take a break after that marathon yeah. if you want to compare it energetically to that. Or climbing Mount Everest, you are just, you finally made it to the top you, you, and you're like, okay, I, I, before I get to the next level, I need to relax. So it's more of a, let me do this reflection let me just take a breather, you know, energetically speaking. Has Spirit ever told you what the other side looks like? Yes. What does it look like? Yes, absolutely. 
So they have everything. They have rivers, streams, golf courses. They have everything. What? Eric, yeah. <laughs> Eric, you want you want to go? I mean, I can we go sit in our Can car you play and really well on the other side? Because I have that problem here. Yes, because you can. Um, the other side is instant manifestation. That's what um, I've read. Okay, keep going. Yeah, yes. I love be, Michael. Let Kim talk. Yes, it, yes. It truly really is where every thought becomes your reality. Now that is true here on Earth too, but we, because of quantum physics. Our thoughts take a little bit time to kind of go out and then to come back, you know, because of the density and the time space continuum. But on the other side, it's like, boom, instantaneously. However you want to look, you'll look. Your thoughts are your reality. So if your enjoyment is fishing, I've had many a spirits come through with a fishing pole. And then I would hear from their, their loved one, oh my gosh, that was their favorite pastime. We lived on a lake. I've seen so much of this. Um, the, vi the colors are so vivid. Like where they talk about the grass, there's shades of green that we don't even know in our light spectrum that they have there. So it's, um, now of course I've never had a near death experience, thank the good Lord, I don't want one. <laughs> but I've been there without having the near-death experience. I've, I've, I've traveled there astrally, soul-wise, and I've seen, um, I've, not only have I seen, they have this temperature that they speak about, which is perfection, uh, like almost like a 70 degrees all the time with a cool breeze, sun shining, beautiful blue skies, uh, clean rivers and lakes, no pollution, no toxic. Uh, waste pretty much what this world probably should have been right. but humans contaminated it and we limited ourselves and we worked from our egos and created the greed and this is why we're in this very dense planet are you are you who you are here there so like uh, like your personality, your grudges, the people you like, the people you hate, the people you love, the people you fell out of love with are like is, is your are you, are you the same are you the same person over there? Okay, first of all, these are fabulous questions. Thank you. Great great questions. Cuz these are all things that I've researched in my own soul and with doing so many readings that I have found out. Mm -hmm. So typically we're the same person when we get there at first with our very limited capacity to understand. But the more we free ourselves from the limiting three dimensional body. And I always say, can you just picture seeing an object, through two little tiny lenses, think about an object, as opposed to seeing that same object from an airplane. There's no difference, like when you get up in an airplane and you're, in, you're looking over your town, you say, wow, I didn't know there were so many baseball fields in my town. Right. Because you can see the aerial view. But when you're in your town, you can only see what's right in front of you. So it's the same when you're in, in the physical world. You really can only see what these two little lenses tell you and your whole filter, which is very limited, explained to you. Plus, add that with the programming from our childhood and all the people that programmed us to believe we're very limited. And then there you have this program and you're stuck inside this matrix like a web. But when you release from the matrix, you say, wow. That object has so many more dimensions that I never saw. Anita Morjani, excuse me one second, Kim. I read this book by Anita Morjani. I'm assuming you know who she is. Oh, of course, yes, yes, yes. She, I've read her book. She had she had cancer. She died of cancer, and she likened it to this, and literally so parallel to what you said. She's like, the only way I kind of describe it is when you're here on this realm in this in this dimension, you're looking at everything with a little flashlight. And you could only focus on this, this little bottle of water here with this flashlight. You can't see anything else beyond that. And that's what this world is like. When you go over there, it's like someone turned on a, a 
flip of a switch and the entire warehouse is illuminated and you can yeah. see everything in the warehouse all at once. <laughs> it, it, is that what you're saying basically? Yeah, it's like it's like if you're looking at an object and you only see a portion of the object, but it's then the then the the uh, curtain lifts up, and you see the whole dimension of what's around that object and what does that object even have significance about? Like the, everything is energy, so we we really get to experience on the other side the meaning of things and why everything is the way it is and why everything happens and who we truly are. So as you evolve and you, you continue to evolve, and I always say, when you get to the other side, you are not automatically granted a cloud with a harp. Right. No, right. you have to earn that space. Right. The same way on earth, we don't come in automatically evolved. We have evolved souls, but we, we sort of remember the truth of who we are, right? So once we get there, a lot of the unlearning happens pretty quickly. And then we really reflect. So there are schools of thought there. There are classrooms where, um, from what I've experienced, a lot of souls, not all, not all, but many souls who have taken their own life may have to kind of go back to this classroom to say, okay, I kind of took the easy way out and I now know there is no easy way out. I, you know, it's like when you're pregnant, I remember saying to my husband during labor, by the way, I know there's no other way to get this baby out. They weren't going to do a C-section, but I had to breathe through the pain mm -hmm. to bring creation in. Mm -hmm. And that's how earth is. We have to breathe through the pain. And then when we get yeah. to the other side, we're like, oh, wow, you know, that didn't have to be as difficult, but my mind got in the way. My ego got in the way. So many things got in the way. And if I could do it all over, I would do it differently. And yeah, is that why we is yeah. that why we come back? Yes, to try right. to try and learn again. To, yes, and and to kind of balance, balance. See, balance is everything. That's one of the reasons I'm called the happy medium. Because when you think about what is the happy medium, what does that mean? It's a play on words, but it really means when someone uses it in a sentence, wow, you just can't find the happy medium. Which oh, is balance. Awesome. You can't find the balance. My whole life is based on the the law of balance because everything within balance is fine. It's, it's when we take it to the extreme is where it really becomes unbalanced and not not healthy. But um, have you ever had a situation with a friend or a relationship, and you feel maybe you got the you know end crap, the crappy ends of the stick, right? Yeah. You can curse on here. It's fine. We're, we're New Yorkers. Then, you're New Yorkers. And as time goes on, you're just minding your business. And then it kind of comes back into your field and you hear it from this person again. Right. But then this time, somehow, they're, you're playing that role for them, not even purposely. Not even purposely. So it's like that, where we all come back and say, okay, last time I was the villain, now this time you be the villain. Really? Yeah, yeah. But you know, I wanna say this. The sooner you learn the lesson, you don't have to repeat it. Right. You do not have to repeat it. Yeah. And that's what the wheel of karma is all about. Yeah, is, I wonder, is, I, hold on, Eric, you I, missed like the last five questions. Okay, it's my turn now, okay? <laughs> we're, we're really big into the law of attraction and I'm getting a sense that law of attraction kind of interplays with the universe here, that when your thoughts go out, it, it hits this matter, right? And when you're on the other side, that your thoughts become things instantaneously. Is that really the secret of life? Like, did we just discover the meaning of life, that the law of attraction is it, that what you think you attract? Yes, and the other secret is this. In order to fuel any machine, we have to give it power. Otherwise, it doesn't move. So let's just think about what we're trying to manifest as, um, as energy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing but energy, energy in motion, 
emotion. So we need, what is the actual fuel behind giving energy the life we want it to have? The energy is a high frequency, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, that's the fuel, like high octane gasoline. Mm -hmm. We need the high octane frequency to push this thought into motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the, the secret that all the ascended masters figured out. Mm -hmm. They figured out that staying in the lower chakras beneath the heart will only keep you rooted to the dense matter, the very slow vibrating frequencies. Because mm -hmm. anything below the heart is survival mode. Mm -hmm. It's the instincts in the gut, the gut solar plexus. It's the root chakra. That's also where our fears lie, our instincts to survive. When you get to the heart chakra and you filter emotions through your heart, you automatically give it octane like a rocket fuel. Really? Yeah, because the most passion comes from the heart. The highest intense emotions, such as love, comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. it doesn't come from the, the root chakra. That comes, you know, like. It's amazing those. that, like, when you're talking, you can feel. Like when you yeah. say heart, like you feel it there. You feel you know, it but, right. But 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 when you're talking about the gut, you feel it there. When you're talking about your brain, you feel it there. There's just the such crown a, chakra. The crown chakra. Yeah, there, yeah. There's just such a there's such a connection. So well, this was going. The only gate, the only way to get to the heavenly realm through the crown is the gateway of the door of the heart. That's the only entry place. So how do you do that? Well, Jesus figured it out, and this is why he was able to create miracles, because he was using the energy of the heavens. He was not limited. So how do you do that? Well, first, I, you know, I am going to give a shameless plug here. Please, go yes. for it. Please. My guides told me to write a whole book about how to get through the heart, and I did. And it was it came out one year prior to COVID. No shock there. And the book is called Your Soul Purpose. And it speaks all about ascension and how to live through your heart. And I mean, that's one way. I mean, geez, this, but the key is to go into the heart. So how do you do that? So any situation that you're, that you're really struggling with, what do people say to do? Follow they your heart. Say, the first thing they say is follow your heart. And they said, well, what does your heart tell you to do? See, when the mind gets involved, you're always going to trip up. Right. You know why, right? Do you know why? No. It's, it's a little obvious because the mind is, it's all it is is a program. It's, it's like the computer program that is very limited and it's, it only will give you what was put into the program. That's all it's capable of giving you. So your subconscious mind, your conscious, yeah. what you feed your conscious mind gets programmed into your subconscious mind. Right. So that's limited information. Right. It's and it it's also very biased information. It, it's it's your program versus my program. Mm -hmm. You might have lived in a, a very free loving home where you know hippies and uh, free love and you know, well not you but people, and then I was raised in this. Christian home where, you know, God's going to punish you if you do this, this, and this. So that's my program versus your program. Right. I so it, it, you can't really go to the mind to get the answers. But when you tune into the universal mind, the only link is through the heart. That's the web. That's the internet that connects to the universal mind is the heart. It's amazing. This is incredible. So what would you tell some, this is, this was going back to my question before Michael had to have his in. I got more, I got plenty more. So, so you're, answer, Eric. you know, like I'm, I want to help people, you know, and I'm not a depressed person. I'm not by any means, probably my only downfall. We had this conversation on a, on a podcast yesterday is my lack of patience. If I could fix something, it would be that. Oh, okay. Um, but what would you tell somebody who is not in a good place? 
How can they, how can they fix themselves? You know, because listen, it's hard times now, and no matter how hard it gets, um, I think positivity matters, but also action matters. But how? Could, what would you tell somebody who is who is not in a great place right now, whether it's financially, work wise, uh, love wise, just the whole nine yards? Well, I would tell them without pushing religion on anyone. First, I would ask them if they believe in a higher power than themselves. Most people do. Many people are not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're uh, maybe were dealt a raw deal in life. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I would also explain to them, and that's my life's work, not just being a medium, but teaching people who they truly are and where they really truly come from and what their greatest capabilities of. I would love to teach that person how to unlearn all of the things that they learned as a program. That's Yoda. That's Yoda yeah. from Star Wars. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. You have and to learn what you unlearned. That, that's so true. And the truth of the matter is, if we, and I, I always hear those words, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Because we're not. We are ashes to ashes, dust to dust. At some point, none of us are getting out of here alive. So the truth is to make the best of our journey and to really teach that person how, how did they actually attract certain situations into their life and how can they actually change that? Uh, because so many people are not willing to take responsibility for their life and for the outcome of their life. Victim mentality, absolutely. You know, but there's so many different dimensions. So some people say to me, well, Kim, I did not cause my son's death. I mean, that to me is the most heart wrenching when a parent has to lose a child. I mean, that is my worst subject because I am a mom. I have three sons. Um, but then I would also teach them about soul agreements and soul contracts. And I would also teach them that this is not all there is. And that we are very, here very, very, very temporarily. Right. Uh, I would teach them about everything the other side taught me about how to look at things and how to really look at the bigger picture as opposed to that little flashlight, Michael, like you said. Yeah. So when you're living with that little flashlight, there's not a lot of light that can come in to illuminate your, your soul. So we have to find things that can illuminate us, that take us out of ourselves. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to be of service to others. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds a little bit like, wait, what? I have no, I don't even have energy to help myself. How can I help others? Well, I find helping others puts us on this high that we can't explain. Really? To be selfless to give even though we have nothing to give. And it doesn't have to be anything physical. It could be whatever you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And start like that. And then start to be grateful for what you don't have and what you do have. Because what you do have, many don't. And if you start little by little looking at these things and bringing the gratitude into it, bringing your whole, what you, what gifts you came here to share, the universe will bestow the same onto you because it does truly work like that. But it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen right away. I also would be very conscious of, and I, and I mean this when I say it, uh, of your diet. I would be so careful about why are you not in this high vibration? What is the part that's bringing your vibration down? I agree a hundred percent. It truly makes all the difference yep. in the what world. Is, what is your suggestion on diet? Well, honestly, truly, um, my biggest, biggest belief is because of what they're putting, I say they, because it's, it's not a secret. Mm -hmm. They're tainting our food with all kinds 100, 100 of poisons that are not even allowed in Russia. Can you believe Russia? Russia has these bans on poisons and chemtrails and things in the skies that they would not allow that the United States is allowing in the FDA. Okay. So we need to continuously detox our bodies yes. from this horrendous stuff that we don't even know is in our food and in our water. We, so so eating 
eating foods that are alive, detoxing, mineralize your body. Our soils are so depleted of minerals, real minerals. So we have to supplement minerals and vitamins if we're not getting it in our diets. And we may say- Amen, amen. Yes, amen. Your mental state is directly correlated to your gut. I'm not a holistic doctor by no means, but I know enough based on what spirit has taught me and even on my own journey. Kim, do you want to live with us? Do you want to come live with Eric and me? <laughs> we'll get we'll get a place. The girl, we're not going to get divorced, but like this is this is our language. Like everything you're saying, like you, we are so on the same page with the no vitamins and the gut. Oh my god, there's no, no coincidence. Yeah, no, no coincidence. No, I at all. mean this is you really have to pinpoint what what put, what is putting you in this state of mind. Right. Like, why is your frequency dropping? You know, we we have to get the sunshine, and we were taught it's bad for you. Oh my we god! We have to get the fresh foods. They they give you the life force that you need. Yes. Right? The yes. chlorophyll. It's life force. Yes. If we are eating nothing but dead dead anything, we're never going to feed our bodies with life. So, I mean, it's not just the basic answer, Eric. I, I right. really would, would assess the energy of the person and what is their diet and what is their program and what is their belief system and, and what, are, what gives them hope and what gives them joy and what is their purpose. The, the, the purpose of me writing your, my book, Your Soul Purpose, have you ever noticed that when people retire, they die? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. They, they die because we have to continue some sort of purpose. Yes. And I, our purpose can change over the course of our life. Yes. I want to I want to drop this on you. So over the summer, so like our dad, um, I'm sure you know, has passed away. I know you work with my mom, our mom, and in, in developing her mediumship skills. And we asked our dad for the secrets of the universe. We're like, dad, when you get there, you got it. You know, like we, we were so connected here. We saw him every day. We knew exactly where he was. We worked together seven days a week. We saw him seven days a week. And when, you know, we said, dad, when you're there, you just, you got to teach us what, what it's all about. Right. And over the summer, I would say like early June, I had a reading with George Anderson, who we, we go to a lot. He's a great, you know, he's a great medium. Um, you know, there's, you know, you, you think, is it real? Is it real? Is this really happening? What's going on now? And my dad came through the reading and my dad's like, this is, this is mind blowing. <laughs> Cause this is not like this was in George, George prefaces. He's like, this is not religion we're talking about. He's like, but you have to really start looking into the archangels. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, George, do you like, this is my dad we're talking about. Cause like our dad was not a religious guy. We were spiritual. Not, and George's like, no, 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 not religion. He's like, you got to look into the archangels and you got to start researching magic with a K. I'm like, George, are, are you sure this is our dad that's coming through here? And George was taking notes because you, George said, your dad is literally giving you the secrets of the universe. Because, and because you asked. Because I asked. When he was alive. And we said, you got you to tell and us it what took it's all him, about. It took, him it took him about two years to get to. Correct. To, to get, get to this, but to he, tell us, but the archangels, what's your stance on the archangels? Because Eric and I and Phyllis, our mom, are working with them now. And I don't want this to deter any reader, any any listeners. And this is uh, we're not put, promoting a religion. This is not Catholicism. This is not Judaism. This is this is strictly like talking to your boys on the other side and like kind of asking them to help you out. Right, right. Well, the, so it took your dad about two years to, to give you this right. information. From that could have been a hundred. Yeah. That could have been a hundred years over there. I know there's no time limit over there, but, but like, but from the other side, right? From the other yes. Side. And it was weird because I went to a hotel right in, in plain view and random psychic. She sat me down. She touched my heart. And I don't remember this lady's name. She, she didn't, she was supposed, she was leaving. And she's like, you know what? She's like, uh, come with me. I'll take you. She put her hand on my heart. She's like, your dad's here. And he's hanging out with the archangels. This was, maybe six months after he died. He's hanging out with the archangels. He wants to know the meat and the potatoes of the place. And that's that's our father. I'm like, okay, yeah, sounds good. He's hanging out with the archangels. He's calling them um, Mikey, Michelangelo and Raph. And I'm like, these aren't Ninja Turtles, right? These are the archangels. <laughs> yeah. And then fast forward a year and a half later, he's like, I got it. 
He's like, I got it. Ask the archangels. Practice magic. But so, well, magic is really intention. That's what magic is. Magic is yes. intention fueled yes. with, remember what I said, fueled with emotion. Yeah. So, and it's manifestation. That's what magic is. Now, it's it's law of attraction in different verbiage, literally. That's it, it is. It truly, we practice it every day of our lives. Yes. But your dad actually had to go and learn first himself before he can relay this to you. We know yes. that, right? Um, yes. here, here's my take on the archangels and I, um, it's not much of a calling for me, but I don't, uh, that's fine. I, everyone, you know, some people feel very called to crystals and, you know, yeah, so, right, right. But, but what I will say that I, that I do know is they were a species commissioned by God, right? whatever your version of God is. And that's why you said it's not about religion, because you it it truly is a frequency, which everything is. Yeah. And they were commissioned for the heavens to keep order in the heavens. Uh, and they also are commissioned as helpers here on earth. Yes. But only if we give them permission. Yes. Okay, they will not help unless they will not help unless you ask. It's really the truth because they cannot get involved with the free will. They can't supersede your free will unless it's not your time and you really commissioned for an amazing purpose and all of the heavens agree, oh my God, there's a train coming right at him. Go and save him because he has a lot more lives to touch. Right. So they really can, with certain situations, get involved without your permission. But um, I believe in them. I I do call on Archangel Michael with, with a lot of my work because I really do need to surround myself with protection because, as we know, mm -hmm. there are some realms that are – totally existent and there are a lot of fallen angels that are roaming around the planet right now mm -hmm. that get into people's psyches mm -hmm. and mindsets and they do their job and they they do and and it, it could be something as simple as you know the music someone feels drawn to it, you know mm -hmm. they come in in very little subtle ways so we have to be very conscious as to being in a great mood in one second and and entering a different space the next minute and feeling really depressed and wondering, is this even mine? Am I, am I picking this up as a sponge for someone else that, like if you walk into a subway station and all of a sudden you just feel down, but you were just whistling outside, you have to understand you're, you're picking up other people's energy as an empath. Mm -hmm. So like we really have to identify where is this energy coming from? Is it mine? Do I own it? And how long has it been with me? Uh, and how do I get rid of it? Because mm -hmm. we are we are natural born alchemists. That yes. is something we can do. I mean, that's part of the magic yes. is um, turning the the darkness into the light. As yes. a matter of fact, you 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 can't have light without darkness. It's part of the same light spectrum. We are all magicians, and, and I, I firmly and not Penn and Teller, David Copperfield magicians. Each no. one of us has the uh, has the ability. We are limitless beings in a meat suit who have the opportunity to create anything in the world that we want. Well, and um, that's the real secret right there. Yeah, right. The more I learn about this, the more I talk to people like Kim and just, I guess, just get more validation, the better I feel about life, the better I feel about everything because, you know, without that, it's, you know, you don't, if, if you don't know that there is life after life, you know, you could, seem like what's the purpose of doing what you're doing and this yeah. could the knowing this gives you purpose to keep going and i think that's so incredibly important kim did you feel anything during our reading during yeah. our, our podcast what'd you feel yes it's for eric but let me just um answer that eric what you just said the the connection what what you just said, Eric, is really all about love. And whatever was created through the bonds of love can never be destroyed by anything, not even physical death, especially not physical death. So that's how we know we will be with our loved ones again and our pets. Um, so I wasn't really trying to, to tune in, but mm -hmm. something really kept getting my attention behind Eric. And when I 
I'm curious. I'm a Gemini. Oh uh, my God. May 26th. June 2nd. All right. Yeah, I so knew we, we connected. We really need to know the, the, the mysteries of the universe. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Like Gemini's, we, we, we won't, we'll, we'll be curious even on our deathbed. Absolutely. Um, this has to do with some equipment that you either ordered Eric or that you have sitting in a box. And I do feel like it was from your father because what I heard was don't skimp. Now I'm not talking about headphones or background noise or it's new equipment that you're either just purchased about to purchase looking into. What did don't, I hold on? Don't what did I tell you? Oh my God. What did I tell you today, Eric? What Michael, did I tell you an Michael, hour before this Michael, call? Michael sent me a link saying he thinks we need to get better cameras. Well, that's what he said. And I know it's your dad because he said, don't, you got to look for quality and not the price. Because oh my God, one hour before this, one I hour, I, I, I was watching a, a YouTube video and it's this guy, vegetable police or whatever. And he, he had this crystal clear movie camera. And I said, Eric, we got to get this. And it was like two grand. Eric's like, nah, I don't think we should be spending on that now. Literally one hour before we got on the call with you. All right. So can I just um, point something out? Please. Why did he address Eric and not Michael on that? You Come both on. have equipment. You're both Eric, doing Eric's the brains. Eric's I, the brains. I make, I make the calls. Eric's the brains behind the operation. But not the brains. Eric is looking to conserve what from what you just said, Michael. Correct. So he needed to sort of appeal to you to say there is no substitute for quality. Mm -hmm. Like buy it once and you'll be good. Eric, right. I'm, I, I sent you the link. It's All a right, Sony we'll, camera. It's we'll done. We'll get them. We're done. Kim, I have a question, a personal question for you, for me. Yes. I, I've, you're a medical medium. I'm in, I feel like I'm in the best health of my life, but I had vertigo in January. I had the flu. My daughter came home. I, we both got the flu and it was, a, I think it was because I had a vitamin D deficiency. Started seeing a nature path. Before you say another word, before you say one more word, this is nothing about a deficiency. This was all inner ear inflammation. Yes, 100% yes. And it's now 10 months later and it's a thousand times better, but I still I still will get it. I'll still, I'll lay down in bed. We were on a call before this and he had to, and I, he had and to I leave started, the call. I started getting, you know, the, the inner ear, the loose crystal, whatever it is. What do you, it, 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 this is not permanent, please tell me. Uh, no, I, I feel... <laughs> No, no. Okay. <laughs> I want to say two things, and okay. not everything is related to uh, what I'm about to say, but you're like that antenna that's tr on the radio, like you're you're trying you're tuning into different frequencies right now, mm -hmm. and most of this happens when you sleep. You're learning so much in your sleep. I feel like you probably wake up tired. Oh my. God, I will tell you what my dreams are after this, but please continue. Okay, so the, you are attuning to the different frequencies. And when I spoke to you about my Claire, my Claire's opening up earlier, your Claire audio is opening up. And so it's like any other muscle that you work out and you flex, it's getting sort of a workout. Yeah. So it's inflamed a little bit like right now, but that's going to sort of balance itself out when it's supposed to. Okay. And um, hold on a second. I just want to see what's being shown to me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> this is amazing. So much traveling in your sleep. Yes. You're, oh you're my traveling God. Everywhere. Uh, oh my God. You have to be aware of that because when you wake up, I see you kind of going right into action mode. Yes. And you're not really grounding first. Oh so God. don't forget, like you, you're out there at, in the night, so you really have to bring yourself into the earth and ground before you really start your day. That's important. Okay. Because that's why you're getting depleted very quickly and tired lately. Yes. I wake up exhausted, but it's been decades like this. I have dreams. And my dreams come true every single night. And it could take years for that dream to come true. But I, I have a dream journal. 
I I knew the I knew who my wife was before I anything. I knew when I was having a boy. I knew I was having a girl. I knew my my brother was going to name his kids Hallie and Zachary. I have it written down with the dates. I have these cognitive dreams, and I know I saw that I was going to have vertigo before it happened. I saw about a month ago that that the crystal was going to go away. It was going to disappear, but it's now a couple months later, and I still have it. Well, do you want to switch seats with me? I would love to. So you're a time traveler. That's yes. what you mean. Yes. I, I dream of my, I don't want to get choked up, man. I dream of my dad and it's like, we're in, we're, he's talking to me like, like you and I are. So I want, I, I need to, this just came to me. I, I wasn't pre thinking it or anything. I um, and I, and I really don't love to talk about past lives because it's hard to prove, but this might resonate. Please. You, your brother, Another brother that pro might not be in your life now, or he might, I don't know. I see three of you were under the influence in another life of an army, and your father was the general. That makes perfect sense. Oh, my God. And he was a good leader. Like, he was all for his men. And three of you came back. Do you have another brother? My Our mom. Oh, my God. My, right. Uh, my, my Our mom and dad had a miscarriage, and it was a boy. In between us. In between us. Uh, and I, I always knew there were three of us. Always. They, they came from the army and he was, I have the chills. He was such a good general, like real fair. Fair. Because that was his personality in life too. Like he could have been like a judge or maybe he was a Libra because they were all about fairness. He was April 3rd. Was his no, no, no. He's an Aries. But Aries. oh my God, Aries are the trailblazers. They are the leaders. Our dad was a leader and still yeah. is a leader. But can I tell you, he doesn't lead with arrogance. He leads with commanding respect in a way that you you want to respect him for his knowledge and his gentle ways. Yes. That's how I get him. I don't get him with an iron fist or like I get him like funny, sarcastic, but very intelligent. And, Extraordinarily. And, um, Really, only about family. Only about family. Only Truly. about family. Only, only about family. The, what happened with him? The sicker he got, the more depressed he got, and the less he wanted to do. And that was towards the end of his life, where you know our wives only really knew him like that. They didn't know him before he was. Oh, when yeah, he was he's healthy. coming in as the the vivacious personality that he was. But he just told me to also tell you that. His soul did not come back as one of your sons. That's not him. Like someone saying, my God, this is so uncanny. My son is just like my dad. So many similarities. My, yeah. My, yeah. No, our, my, I don't, I don't my son. So. No, no, I agree with you. Like um, he knew, he, our, he, he knew our, all four kids. Oh, yes. I got gotcha. He was alive. There's yeah. a lot of influence he has in one of the, one of the boys. I want to really only single out one that he's very connected to in the sleep state, uh, watching over like kind of like, like a protege type. He's really, that's very important. Now also Michael, your name is Michael, but I get a Michael in the middle name of someone else or another Michael name. So I, that could be your dad, middle name or another Michael. Cause your name is two times. I, um, I um I write under under different Michaels. My middle name is Michael Samuels for the for my book Just Ask the Universe, which is a global international LOA bestseller. Like a, it's a law of attraction book, and um it's still after ten years in the top one hundred most read books on Amazon in spirituality. But, wow! Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I have it. Uh, Congratulations! Yeah. Oops. Shameless plug to our audience, but yeah, Just Ask the Universe. Oh, I, I wrote this. I love and, it. Oh, thank so you. you go on to different authors. I do. Yes, I write. I write spiritual books yeah. under my, Michael Samuels, and I also write novels under my real name. This is my novel, um, and I write under Michael Oaken, and I also wrote under Michael Philip Cash. Um, I wrote other novels under Michael. Oh, Philip so Cash. That, so this this is a first for me. I didn't. I never said that. Where you're using all these aliases? I yeah, am but there's multiple Michaels. There, there's, mul it. there's multiple Michaels, but it's still just, it's, you know, I'm it, still Michael Logan. Yes, of course. Of course. It's all one source. That's so the, one. The vertigo is going to go away, right? Just, to, <laughs> just, just all he cares. About. <laughs> um, it's, it's so I want to say that you 
probably want to have some of this happening because your frequency is raising. Hmm. So don't like, don't rush it. It's like, okay. this is what they just showed me. It's like when you're cooking a delicious meal and it needs to simmer, you can't rush it. It has to be perfect. Done. Okay. So, so yeah. So I, okay. I want to, you're amazing, you know, I, you. In, the, in the worst way, I don't remember my dreams. I want to be, I want to connect more with the other side. Um, just yesterday we were at my mom's house. It was her birthday and uh, we were sitting in her den and then all of a sudden I got a whiff of cigar smoke in my face. Like someone blew it right in my face. Um, that's hap only happened twice to me. One was yesterday. And the other time I was in my mom's house and we were in her garage. And then I smelled cigar smoke. My dad smoked cigars. Um, those have really, other than gut instincts and re being able to read people as far as uh, knowing if they're good or bad or if uh, they're good or bad for me or for us, um, or if uh, like if they're a believer, so to speak. Um, but other than that, it's radio silence. How would I become better at it? So Eric. <laughs> the tutelage of Kim Russo. So as you're speaking, I am hearing, like, just like, get out of your left brain. Get into your right brain. It's hard for me. Well, that's, that's, you ask the question, that's the answer. Meaning, uh, when you start to create, now hear, hear me out, Eric. Do not create something and every step of the way you need to make, have it make sense. You cannot create it's almost like nothing ever works out on paper, right? Mm -hmm. Life doesn't work out on paper. So neither does matters of the heart, which lead to creation. Mm -hmm. Right brain, developing the right brain leads to intuition being very heightened because you truly are, that is your connection to the one mind, the spiritual realm and the higher dimensions. The left brain is really only your connection to analytics, critical thinking, having everything to be safe, making sense, not wanting to look like a fool, ego. I would really say, and this is not to, you know, rag on you in any way, because I, I don't know you. I never met you. No, no. But when I read your energy and everything that's being shown to me, there's this level of I need to command respect but if i go off in a kooky way nobody will respect me so i have to have backup for everything i do and say i need the proof although and i'm a gemini so i am also very i and i'm from new york so this this should have been the show me state because i'm not gullible and on any level right. now Eric, I'm not saying your mind is closed because obviously it's not closed. You're, you're very exposed to this. Mm -hmm. But as a personality, I would say, assessing your energy, you actually never truly surrendered to allow yourself to not have the answers and to just wing it. You're not good at winging it. Mm -hmm. you, if you could wing it more with faith and trust and say, let's see where this takes me and become a co-creator with the universe together, not just you doing your research. Co-create means you need to let go of the reins every once in a while, maybe allow that to be the dominant force and just use your logic as a backup and you will fly. On so every it's you just better a, be taking notes, bro. It's, no, it, Kim, we, Kim it's, it's, you. it's recorded. So we, so it's, it's all about the mindset. It truly it's about is letting about, go. It's about letting go and stop being so analytical. It's it's about yes, about how what level of control are you willing to surrender to the universe? Many of us like to play things safe. If I have my data, I'll know what I'm doing. I'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm not saying you research me or you didn't research me, but based on your two personalities. I would say Eric would be the first one to research me over Michael. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm not comparing you, although there are a lot of differences here, energetically. So Michael would be the one to fly by the seat of his pants. <laughs> And Eric would be the one, like almost like a Virgo energy. And I don't know if you're a Virgo. Capricorn. Oh, well, Capricorn especially. Capricorn is all about structure. And if you have <laughs> if you have Virgo in your chart, you're extra, extra organized. Um, but there's this level of being so smart that you can actually drop the ball. So it doesn't always have to make sense. And that's because your left brain is very developed, but the right brain, not so much. <sighs> I need you a drink. Remember, do you remember Surrender Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz? Yes. Yeah. It's all connected to that same concept. Surrendering to, it's okay not to know. I'll find out soon enough. And that's, I, that's the fun of the journey. Is it because like, I always feel like my, I feel like my brain is turned on from the minute I wake up to the minute I go to sleep. That's, that's the feeling that I get that I'm always thinking I'm always online. I'm always creating content. I'm always working. If I'm not doing that, I'm consuming something. Should I go and make it? I mean, should I try and meditate to decrease that? Right. So what you actually just said to me is a validation in the sense of I'm always using my mind to yes. create yep. my research, my content, my critical thinking. Yep. You need those skills. But allow the ideas to filter in, um, which they probably do. So, sometimes I don't know where an idea comes from and all of a sudden right. I'm like this. I'm like, I didn't just think of that. You know, yeah. like, yeah, that happens all the time. But don't analyze it to death because what I'm actually seeing, actually your father just told me, he said there are so many ideas that we give him that he, um, you pre-think how it's going to go and mm -hmm. then you squash it and then it never comes to life. Literally and, everything you're saying our mom has said to him in the last, in the last six months. Oh, Every, okay. Everything you are saying our mother said literally verbatim. Well, this is a validation for, you, you yes. know, from your mom, from your dad. But I want to give you an example. For example, um, a thought will come in. And you have such a quick mind on the left brain that you can put it together mathematically. You can figure out what it's going to cost, how much manpower it's going to take, how much time it's going to take out of your day. And, and you decide it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the the universe wants you to do it. So I've had this happen on so many occasions, especially writing my book, Your Soul Purpose. The universe said to me, we want you to get this book out ASAP. And it's going to be all about ascension and your soul purpose. My logical left brain said, that's not what my fans know me for. They want to know how to be a medium. And I heard on the right side, you need to trust us. This has to happen ASAP. My left brain said, but I don't have a book deal. My right brain says, don't worry we'll get, about it. We'll get you one. Right. So I'm writing the book, right? And they tell me to insert a chapter on numerology, which I know very little. I'm not a numerologist. I'm horrible in math. <laughs> and they laughed at me. They says, we will give you the content. I said, but I don't want to come off as a fraud. I don't want to claim to know numerology. And they explained the whole thing. They says, well, this is not about you, Kim. This is about putting together the whole picture. And that's part of the picture. Numbers are creation. So we need you to include it. Now, I could have gone back and forth, which I did, mm -hmm. and I do, but I've learned to surrender to trust the voice that's arguing with me. That's mm -hmm. the voice you need to trust hmm. and surrender to. That's your higher self. So my vertigo is going to go away, right? I mean, I'm kidding. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> no, like the, the, your vertigo is good because it's, yeah. it's creating something new for you.
Yep. And that would make perfect sense that it's unlocking some new potential for you. It's it amazing. is. It's amazing. It, it's balancing. And then you know what, Michael? I, I just heard you asked for it, so you got it. Yeah, I asked for this. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Yeah, I did. I, well, I, you, you did. You asked to be more in tune. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And just Thanks. being off balance for me has been has been so it's been chaotic for me because generally my life is it's pretty, pretty even flow, you know, like I, I, I write, I do the podcast with my brother. We run an amazing company and I've, I've been actually taking lessons to be a, a medium. I've been taking lessons from a gentleman by the name of Edward. I think you met him. Um, Edward Pierce. Yeah. I don't know if you know him or not, but we, uh, you know, well, actually he's one of my students too. So that's interesting. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So Edward, <laughs> he's in other class. Yeah, no, we, I, we, Edward read, read me about a year ago when we had this, this company retreat and we had, he came to this restaurant and he was telling me stuff that like, like, yeah, yeah, our dad passed away. Right. But like, he was telling me stuff that like, no one, like, you know, like only, only my dad and I knew what do you, what do you say about naysayers when you have like, when you have like a guy that comes to you and goes, yeah, 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 yeah. you talk to the dead. Yeah. There's chakras. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're like, oh yeah, you know, your uncle's here and his name was Jack and you used to play softball with him or whatever the case. And you see their faces changing as you're saying something that is so real and true. Like everything you said to us in the last uh, 20 minutes was like dead on, no, no pun intended, like accurate and dead on. What do you say to the naysayers? I say that, it, it, well, first of all, that's a, a daily occurrence where there's a skeptic and, you know. I, what, I, I would be a skeptic if I didn't have this gift myself. So I can actually see the other side of it as well. Uh, so I don't judge. I, I just know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And what, what I really do say to anyone about what they don't understand can actually frighten you. So it's all about not having the proper knowledge behind the stigma that mediums have and the stereotype you know there's a lot of mediums out there that are real farce and phonies and fakes and gypsies and they do give us a bad name and that's that's really a shame you know not all doctors are good and not all not all attorneys are good and not all police yeah. officers are good exactly. but there are the good ones that make up for it and there are the authentic ones so um I always tell people, you don't need to believe, and I'm not trying to force you to believe anything. That's not my job. Uh, what I would ask people to do, though, if they're, they're maybe seeking something from me, is to have an open mind. That's all you really could ask for, is to understand that we, we don't know everything in the universe. And I like to really uh, present my work as nothing more than science. Uh, although I'm very spiritual, I like to combine the science angle of it because that's truly what makes up everything in the universe is energy, atoms, molecules. Um, and if I can actually understand it from that standpoint, I know that people will accept scientists' delivery. Like proof from a scientist, they will accept over some kooky, like what you said, chakra, you know, hug treeing, right, 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 blonde woman that comes. And then maybe sometimes when I open my mouth, I may sound like I know what I'm talking about. Right. And I think that might stop them also and give them some food for thought. And then of course the reading itself clinches the deal. I mean, oh, have you, have you ever had a reading where it was, they're like, nope, nope. 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 And then they go back and they find out, Oh my God, she was a hundred percent accurate. Oh yeah. Well, see, this is what I've learned and for any mediums out there doing this work and for you, Michael, the faster they answer with a no is the more it's accurate. Sure. Hmm. They're not even giving it a second to sink in. They're just combat. They're very combative right. and they want to challenge you. I'm not, I don't uh, allow for that. It's amazing. How do you, one more question, then we'll let you go. How do you deal with, uh, I don't know how to phrase this, but you know, we're big law of attraction believers. How do you deal with when you're still just waiting for it to happen and it feels like it's never going to happen? Another great question. That was an amazing question, Eric. Because like we're, we're there, right? Like we're, we're in COVID. We're, we're, we're in the travel business. If you don't know where we, we. I know nothing. 
I yeah, don't. We, yeah. we we drive people. So my parents started a company called BLS 50 years ago in their kitchen long, on Long Island, and basically we drive executives, celebrities, financial people. It's a glo a global car glo service. A global a global car service. Obviously, oh my God, I think I've taken your service many times. We've driven most, you before. Yes, most likely. Oh, yes. Yes. yes you've done you've done work with A and E and. Yeah. Yes, I have. But kudos because I I have to say this. They were trying to save money and they went to another company. Yes. I said, no, 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 no. You got to go back. Yes. You have to go back. Yeah. We and fought we fought them. We we're like, you're using a black car service. And like you know, now everything is about safety, health and safety protocols. And we're leading our industry with health and safety. So uh, go ahead, Eric. I don't want to, you know, the, I don't the question the topic. was, you know, like we're, we're in a holding pattern and it's hard okay. and there's no more forbearance. How, how do you tell, what would you tell people in our industry now to, to, to get through this? Well, honestly, this is, this is not really just your business. This is, this is, this is the world is happening right now. Right. We are all, we have all been put on pause myself included. I travel. I'm not traveling. Yeah. Uh, we're being rerouted. Okay. It's like a spinning top that was going so fast. And the universe said, Oh, wait a minute. I have to stop you guys before you go off the cliff. Not you, but you know, everybody. Mm -hmm. we, we're in an incubation period right now. Look at everything as uh, because you used the right word. We are in a holding pattern, but we're more in, in an incubation period. All of us, all of us. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're sitting in the darkness in order to create because you can't create in the light. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes. Like a baby is birthed in the mother's womb and that's dark. Mm -hmm. I always say trees, the roots are in the dark ground. Brilliant. That is unbelievable. We truly create in the darkness. And this is where we rise up in the darkness. The dark night of the soul. Truly. So instead of wanting it to go back to the way it was, what's actually happening is sitting in this very still state incubation, embryonic uh, state of consciousness we're actually creating a, and we're co-creating a better way to do things. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, Spirit told me to start another class and I automatically went to the old way of life. Okay. I don't have an office. Where right. am I going to hold this class? Right. And all of a sudden everyone's in their own living room joining me on zoom. And I, that was a problem solved right there. But that's just one tiny, tiny, tiny example, because Eric, in 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 the craziness of running BLM, BLS, 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 nobody would have ever had time to sit back and improve it. You could have made little improvements here and there and everything. Genius. So what what about the work smarter, not harder? We are all learning how to. Uh, tap into our own gifts. And sometimes our gifts have nothing to do with corporations. Right. Sometimes our gifts are more personal to us and then what we can offer the world. So although we all want things to keep going, we want the momentum to keep going. We need to also be smart enough to know, like, honestly, I was on a roll. You guys were on a roll. I was Same on a bitch. roll. Same. Same. Had, right. I had the TV show. I was, you know, doing sold out theaters and casinos and big groups. But I honor spirit to know that they know better. I am in this big giant consciousness together with all these other people where I agreed to get on a certain path, right? So everything we did up till now was more or less like prepping us. It was the the pre, what do you call it? The pre-game. We were pre-gaming. We were sharpening our business skills. We were sharpening our people skills. All of it. We were sharpening everything about how to run a business. But now what we're doing, see Michael's, you know, taking that whole mediumship thing. Now what we're doing is we're, we're taking our own personal gifts, spiritual gifts, 
and then we can incorporate them into everything else we've learned. Uh, we were in an apprenticeship up until now, and, and I teach this in my class. Right now is game time. What we've done before now, no, we were pre-gaming. Oh, my God. Does that make sense? Oh, my God. Beyond. Beyond. No one, no one explained it like that. So please don't go back to that mindset. That's the old mindset. That was good for what it was. And it worked. And you you right, right. you know, you really serviced a lot of a lot of people, like me included. I felt so safe, clean. I knew I was getting to my destination with punctuality. It was a and and it might still go, but if it goes again, it's gonna be even better. It'll have a new twist. Wow. There certainly is a silver lining. Don't limit yourself. Do not limit yourself. Like I'm willing to give up everything I've done so far. And, and believe me, it holds weight. My work will reverberate long after I'm gone. So it wasn't a waste. It does. It services a lot of people. But I now know that I, I am amping up my service in some other way. I just don't right. know what. I don't know what that is. But I am... Well, curious enough to know. I love a mystery. I love to be surprised. And I love to co-create that journey and that creation. I love to be part of it. And so the only way I can do that is become the, 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 the faithful servant. But you can't be a faithful servant if you don't have good listening skills. And if you tell your boss constantly, no, I don't want to do that. It takes too much. What is that boss going to do? They're going to they're going to find someone else. Mm -hmm. So become that faithful servant, understanding that yeah, it's going to take a little work. Right now, we are in the preparation stage to the next creation, mm -hmm. and that creation is going to serve humanity. It's not going to be self serving. If you're in the mindset of self serving, this is to your audience, you're going to flop because we're not going into that. Um, astrological sign. We're coming out of the self-serving age of Pisces and we're going into the age of Aquarius. Oh my God. Someone told me that. George Anderson told me that. Well, we are. And I'm not an astrologer, but I'm smart enough to know, think about the song all those years ago, Age, age of, of Aquarius. Aquarius. Right. Is the age of love and unity, not oneness, not self, unity. So we were headed really towards ourselves. Um, and now we are rerouting to unity consciousness. So what you will wind up being successful doing is going to help serve humanity to on a deeper level. I mean, not, to I could, diminish, not to diminish cost service. We need that. I couldn't imagine a better way to end our show because it, it truly beautiful. is inspirational and you are, you're doing what you're supposed to do. And we, we really appreciate you, Kim. Kim you're, a Kim, you're a beautiful soul and a beautiful uh, person, thanks. really and truly. By the way, do you three boys have the gift? Uh, they absolutely, all three have the gift. And um, my one of my children, I won't say which one, fights it every step of the way. Sure. Our, our children, all four of our kids, um, especially my daughter and his daughter, very, very in tune. Very well, in tune. They came in with different DNA than we have. Yeah, right. They came in with different because they they really know what's ahead of them. They they you know people talk about this generation that they're lazy and they're this and they're that. They're storing it all up because they're going to be on the front line. The real warriors. Don't yeah. underestimate them. Love it, Absolutely. Kim, Kim. Where can people find you? Where can you know? Please plug anything you want. Uh, well, they really could find me. I, I would love new followers on my Instagram, on my Facebook page, on my YouTube channel, but. All of those links can be found on my website, and it's kimthehappymedium.com. Unbelievable. I love it. Kim, thank you for coming on our show. Everybody, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I think this was a great podcast, and it will- uh, You hold the record, by the way, for longest interview, and like I could probably go on for another hour and a half talking to you. That was Wait, but you know why? Because there's two Geminis on the call. Hundred percent. I mean, I didn't you even. Guys, I, I've, I've I had grown to be up restrained. With this. You, you got yeah. You guys I had to be a little restrained. Keep going. Yeah, because Eric, you know, Eric knows that. Like, I, I'm a yabbity. I could talk for people for hours. I love hearing people's journeys, but you're fascinating, and uh, I would love. You. We would love to keep in touch. 
we're gonna yeah. sign we're gonna sign off now but hold on don't go anywhere everyone like subscribe leave comments go follow kim on insta and facebook and all that good stuff thank you guys thank you guys bye-bye thank you